Hello DAX people! In this video we're going to continue applying the stuff we learned about derivations and iterators and we're going to continue doing so inside of Power BI. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. I'm here in derive iterate application.pbix, a Power BI file, and I'm in the tab called values PT call. PT stands for physical table. This is the derivation that we're going to use for this video. In the last video, we talked about the physical table derivation, which is in some ways the most used. Uh, in this one, we get a temp table that has all the physical rows of a particular table in the data model, given the current filter context. It respects the filters. And this one gets all the columns of a table. In this video, we're going to focus on this derivation, the values uh, function pointed at a column in the data model. And what does this bring back? This brings back the number, or not the number, this brings back a temp table that has all the visible values of whatever column we point at in that physical uh, table of the data model, right? And this one is going to respect the filter context, right? So uh, what do we have here? Here we've got two summary tables, two summary tables. Uh, in this one, we're breaking down a measure called distinct dishes by lunch and dinner. And over here, we've got the same measure, distinct dishes. This time it's being broken down by to go and dine in. Right. Just as a reminder, the, the data that we're working with is the same data we've been working with. Uh, the physical table has one, I should say the data model has one physical table in it, and that physical table is called mini. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, find that measure. Over here on the right hand side, I've got this uh, table called one measures. Go ahead and twirl that open. And also go ahead and twirl open uh, this folder, B values, PT. Okay. Now in there, the name's kind of hidden. This is the distinct dishes call or distinct dishes measure. So go ahead and click on it so we can see the formula. Right. Now uh, in the formula, we've actually already got the finished version here in this comment block. This is a comment, but right now it's just returning a blank, which is why we get a bunch of blanks over here. Right. So we want to write this formula right here so we can watch the measure actually go do something. So click on the end of line two and hit backspace a couple times. Okay. And so this is going to be a simple builder pattern using the values derivation. So go ahead and type in sum x, right? I'm going to type in my own opening parentheses. If you prefer, you could just hit tab and have Power BI do it for you. I'm going to hold down shift and hit enter to go to the next line. So sum x wants a temp table. Well, the temp table we're going to give it is going to be based on a derivation. Specifically, it's the derivation where we point the values function at a particular column. So go ahead and type in VAL. And when we do, we'll get a couple different functions here. The one I care about is values. So go ahead and double click on values, right? I'm going to add a space, right? And uh, we're going to point that values column at, a, I'm sorry, we're going to point that values function at a column, specifically the dish column, because we want to know the number of distinct dishes. So we can already see it down here, right? But I'm going to type in M-I-N-I, -I, just to sort of narrow down my list of stuff that starts with mini. The column that we want is this dish column in the mini table. So go ahead and double click on it and it'll finish typing it out for you. You can also type it out by hand, but I'm, I'm too lazy to do that. I'm going to add a space and a closing parentheses. You don't need the spaces, but I do think they make things more readable. Okay, now go ahead and add a comma. So we're finished with argument one of our iterator. This is going to be the temp table that we work with. The temp table is going to be the result of this derivation where we point the values function at the dish column in the mini table. So go get me all the current visible dishes, right? Not all of them, just the current visible ones. Okay, go ahead, hold down shift and hit enter. So we're gonna get a temp table that has all the visible dishes, right? And uh, what do we wanna do with it? Well, since we wanna know the number of dishes, our expression column is just going to be the number one. For every single row in that temp table, just have a one, which will tell us how many rows we have, which will tell us how many dishes we have, right? So if you wanna do a row count, uh, you pass it into a sum x iterator, and your expression column is just the number one right there. Okay, so go ahead, do shift enter, backspace to line up the cursor with the s in sum x, and do closing parentheses. Now go ahead and hit enter to watch this thing actually work. And what do we get? We get two, three, two, and two. Okay, good. So you may already know this, but let's just go through it to be sure. Where are these numbers coming from? Well, let's think about this cell right here. This cell, because it evaluates in this row of the summary table, right? Uh, the measure is going to actually add a filter with the uh, categories of the current row. So for this cell, there's going to be a filter for shift equals lunch, right? As opposed to this cell down here, which is going to have a filter for shift equals dinner, which looks like that. So this one, it's shift equals lunch, right? So if we just consider the lunch rows, which is these first four rows right here, and we ask the question, what are the distinct values of the dish column? right, that are currently visible because values is a respectful derivation, 
right? Well, we're just looking at these first four rows right here. So we see pasta, burger, pasta, and burger. If I remove the duplicates, the only values I have are pasta and burger, which is why we get this temp table right there, right? So values of the dish column given this filter context produces this temp table of pasta and burger, okay? So uh, the iterator is then going to add a column to that temp table and sum it up because we're using the sumx iterator, okay? What's the definition of our expression column? Very, very easy, it's just the number one. So you get the number one there and the number one there. So if I sum up that expression column that has one and one, well, any math experts in the room, what is one plus one? It's two, right? Which is why we get two right there. Similarly, for this cell right here, right, we're going to get all of the visible values of the dish column in the mini table given the current filter context. Well, for this cell, the current filter context is going to have a filter for shift equals dinner. So given that, we're no longer looking at the lunch rows. We're looking at the last three dinner rows. And if I ask what are the visible uh, values of the dish just for dinner, well, we've got burger, salad, and pasta. There's no duplicate values, so we get that temp table right there. Dish, burger, salad, and pasta. Okay, we get that temp table, we add this column to it, so we get one, one, and one. Because we're using the sum x function, we then add up those numbers. So one plus one plus one. Oh, I know this one's a little bit harder, but in case you didn't know, the answer to one plus one plus one is three, which is why we get three right there. Similarly, for this cell, right, it executes the same code, but it does so under a different filter context or a different set of active filters. Over here, it was lunch and dinner. For this cell, it's to go, type equals to go. So if we ask, what are the distinct dishes for type equals to go, right? Well, we've got that row, that row, that row, and that row. So we've got pasta, burger, burger, and burger. Oh, I guess burgers are popular to go. Okay, well, if we remove the duplicates, we just get pasta and burger. So we get that temp table right there, which is what that derivation produces. We then add a column to it with the expression uh, one, and that's it. So we get a one right there, a one right there, one plus one equals two. Similarly, down here, right, we're just looking at the dine-in rows. So that's that one, that one, and that one. Well, if we say, what are the visible dishes uh, given the current filter context of type equals dine-in? Well, we get pasta, salad, and pasta. We remove that duplicate pasta, so we just get pasta and salad. Pasta and salad. So we produce that temp table right there. We add an expression column with the definition of one, so we get one and one. One plus one equals two, which is why we get two right there. Okay, so that's a nice good example of using the values derivation inside of a sumx iterator to get basically a distinct count of a particular column.